I have not seen my puzzle collection together like this. It's a little bit daunting. I actually didn't realize how many puzzles I've collected over the past two years until I started to prep for this video. And here we are in a mountain of puzzles. So I started getting into puzzles officially during the pandemic. I think it's kind of cliche that everyone was doing puzzles in the very, very beginning. I just never stopped. I think it was a combination of the pandemic where I already was kind of interested in puzzles. I had already done a few in my life then. So I was like, that seems like a, a normal hobby for me to pick up. Uh, I didn't think it would turn into an obsession, of course. Uh, and then I discovered the YouTube channel, Karen Puzzles. And that's where my collection really took off and where my obsession really began. I discovered that I physically cannot feel a lot of anxiety while I'm doing a puzzle. It's like it takes up the same part of my brain as my overthinking part so when I'm doing a puzzle I do not care about anything else in the world <laughs> thing that I want to start with is my puzzle storage. In this video, we're going to cover every single thing you could possibly want to know about my puzzle process, my storage, my collection. Uh, there's a little q and I'll answer questions as we go along. The first location of puzzle storage I want to show you is actually a shelf that I found in the dumpster and thought it would be a perfect plant shelf to go outside. However, I never put it outside. I just keep my plants inside next to the window and the puzzles stacked on the shelves below them. It just ended up being the perfect size and shape for so many of my puzzles and I love having my puzzles on display personally. I don't like to have them put away. You know, I have under the bed storage. I could probably store them there, uh, but I just like to look at them. <laughs> I liked seeing my stuff. Same reason why I have my entire DVD collection on display in the living room as well. Anyway, I love how they all look on this plant shelf and I get to see them while I'm sitting on the couch and while I'm doing my other puzzles. Um, I just also like to have most of my puzzles in view of my puzzle area. Yes, I have a whole dedicated corner to puzzling, which we'll get to in a minute. The next place of storage I wanna show you are these two little shelves that I bought actually to serve as nightstands at some point, um, but they were just too small to work for that. So I ended up putting them in the corner of our living room, kind of throwing a fake plant on there, some candles, you know, doing that whole thing, decorating it, and it stores even more puzzles. <laughs> Moving on from that storage, we have another shelf in the living room that is actually next to our TV, and I have multiple spots on this shelf for puzzle storage. The first one being the second shelf is where I keep my cute area wear puzzles, which we'll talk about. Um, I love how these look with the color of the books next to them. These are some of my favorite horror books that I read last year. So in case you like books and want to, some books recommendations, read those. But the artwork is just so beautiful. Why would I not display them? And I think honestly, having beautiful puzzle boxes is a great way to add color to my space. It's just how I personally prefer to add color because my palette right now is pretty neutral. We have like a black and white rug. It's just very neutral. So, well, we do have green curtains though in the living room, which I love. And then going two shelves down, we have my huge stack. Stack. Again, we have an area where one on the bottom, but these are my New York Puzzle Company uh, puzzles for the most part. I keep there. These are just the less aesthetic ones, so I don't mind keeping them on the bottom shelf of a shelf we don't really look at that much. And then I do have a little bit of storage in my bedroom where I keep my keyway puzzles specifically, the little cardboard box ones. Um, these I don't know, just look good on that bookshelf in the room and I don't mind keeping some of them in there, obviously. Okay, before we get into the collection, I have to talk about my famous puzzle board. I say famous because if you follow me on my horror Instagram, which I know not all of you are going to be interested in, I am a full-time horror content creator now where I review horror movies, talk about anything horror. Um, I do have an Instagram, it's here. If you want puzzle content, you're gonna wanna go there. I know it's combined with horror content, but I do have a highlight over on that Instagram with all of my puzzle crunches and puzzle content that I post on there. I kind of use it as my personal Instagram now as well. I don't use my Sarah Hawkinson Instagram, by the way. So if you've been missing me on Instagram at all, follow my horror one. I do post lifestyle stuff there as well on the stories. So it's just my personal one now. Anyway, I always show my puzzle board that I use for doing the actual puzzles, which is my favorite investment piece that I have ever purchased in my life. If you're planning on doing this full-time as a hobby, if you're gonna spend a lot of time on puzzling as a hobby, 
This board, I cannot recommend enough. First off, it has two drawers on either side, so four drawers in total, which makes sorting so easy. I don't even think I could do a puzzle without them. The size of puzzle board that I have is the 1500 piece one. I think it's the biggest one because I had read the reviews that the smaller one that's meant for 1000 piece puzzles actually isn't that big enough and I like to have the extra space around to use for more sorting and organization of my pieces. It is a little bit pricey. I think it runs at a little over $80 for just a board. You could probably DIY one. I know Karen Puzzles uses boards like uh, foam boards for her puzzling. This was just my preference and my investment that I wanted to do. So underneath the puzzle board in order to prop it up off the ground so I'm not completely hunched over, which I am most of the time, I really need to work on my posture, I keep a laptop tray. So you could use any kind of tray, desk, your know, lap tray, lap desk, anything like that. Um, that's what I personally prefer to have it propped up on. And then I would spend hours sitting on the ground so I decided to invest in this seat, this like foam seat that I actually got for or my dining chairs because the only office I really have is my dining table and I also am trying to write a lot more as you know and spending hours writing and editing at the dining table in a dining chair was not doing good things to my back. I'm in my 30s now. I really need to invest in proper uh, support. So I bought this seat in order to sit at the dining chairs more comfortably, but it just so happens it works for puzzling on the floor as well. And then for lighting, I did invest in a light that was meant for filming. And then I ended up just using it as a puzzle light because I did not know it couldn't go very tall. So for now it just serves as a puzzle light, which is the most expensive puzzle light you could probably buy, even though it's supposed to be an investment for my job. But it just works so perfectly. I can control the settings on my phone. I can turn it on and off on my phone. I can make it cool toned or warm toned. It's just the perfect puzzle light. So I am absolutely obsessed with my puzzle setup. It just makes everything so much easier and makes the puzzle process so much smoother. I cannot recommend all of these things enough. So again, before we get into the collection, I just wanna answer the most commonly asked question that I get because I have two cats. How do you puzzle with cats? How do they not run off with all your pieces? How do they not mess up your pu puzzle in progress? I'll tell you this, they're older. They're gonna be 11 this year, so they're not super rambunctious, you know? When they get the zoomies, Sometimes they will run over all of my pieces. Sometimes they will try to jump on the board and the board is larger than the stand. So sometimes it tips and they just knock all my puzzle uh, off the board. Sometimes I forget to put all of my boards away, like the little drawers for organizing, and I leave them on the ground and they will run across them and just scatter pieces everywhere. I've never lost a piece from that, knock on wood. But they just don't care about my puzzles, and I know that doesn't help you at all because obviously if you have a young cat or a kitten or something that's very playful and likes puzzle pieces, I don't really know how to help you there. I think having it off the ground helps. I try to play with them every day to distract them and make sure they get playtime in when it's supervised and also leave out a bunch of toys for them on the regular. So I'm constantly also surrounded by cat toys. And I think that helps them focus more on the cat toys because it's more interesting to play with feathers than it is a cardboard piece. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so now we're finally going to get into the puzzle collection. I am very excited to talk about every single one of these and I don't know where to start. Actually, I do know where to start. We're gonna start with the puzzles I have framed. Now, I get that question a lot. What do you do when you finish a puzzle? Do you ever frame your puzzles? I have framed puzzles and I have four of them framed. Three of them are in the same frame. Yes, that's right, you heard me. I don't use puzzle glue because I like to redo my puzzles a lot. So I will take them out of the frame, crumple them up and redo them. So I'm not a person to glue puzzles pretty much ever. I don't think I would ever glue a puzzle because I will 100% always wanna redo them. But the four I have framed are some of my favorite art and also the hardest puzzles I've ever done, which I had to frame. Maybe I'll redo them one day. These ones were really, really challenging. I don't know if they're my hardest puzzles I've done, but I'll get to that. I am going to answer uh, which puzzles were my hardest, easiest, uh, number one recommendations, everything like that. First up, we have the Marauder's Map from Harry Potter. Uh, this puzzle was so hard. This one I did in the pandemic. I think this was my third puzzle that I did in the pandemic um, in 2020. It was fun. It's just a lot of the same colors and that's typically not the type of puzzle I gravitate towards. I like it to have a lot of different colors, shapes, pictures going on. I like a lot of variety because that makes it more fun. This one was just really about organizing all the pieces so I could easily 
you know, pick out the one that I needed. So this one is framed currently. Also, I put it up for my Harry Potter Halloween, which I still do. The thing, I get questions a lot too. Do you have any horror puzzles? Because obviously I love horror movies. Yes, obviously I do have horror puzzles. Here's two. These are my brand new ones I haven't done yet. But I also have the thing. This puzzle is amazing. This was actually a gift from my friend Sarah. Obsessed with it. The visual... This is beautiful. Um, one of the hardest puzzles I've ever done. Like there, this was before I was really into puzzling though. So I don't know if I would be better at this puzzle now with all the experience, especially my setup now. I think it would be, you know, a hundred times easier. But Ryan and I worked on this together. This was our second puzzle in the pandemic and absolutely loved this. It took two different tries and we are missing a piece because of that. So this was on our dining table probably in 2018 and half done so we just weren't gonna finish it so i put it all away in the box in sections like i kept them together and then during the pandemic we busted it back out finished it up and i framed it so these two though are ones that i will 100 percent do again in fact i've done this one twice already this puzzle means so much to me this is the grand tour from new york puzzle company this is one of my favorite puzzles of all time. I love space, in case you didn't know. So anything spacey, I love. I have a couple different space-themed puzzles, which are some of my favorites. This was the first one that we really took on in the pandemic, and it was such a good experience. I have such nostalgia for that time period of putting this together. And I loved it so much, I bought the mug version of this, because they do, New York Puzzle Company does do mugs with their puzzle images on it so i have this one this one is also framed uh not because i don't want to do it again but because i love the artwork but what is in the forefront of the current frame right now is this puzzle this puzzle is so fun so they have a whole line called visions of the future and they're all spacey like dystopian futuristic type prints so this is visit mars of course and this one is definitely harder than the grand tour if you're going to pick one this one's easier um, but this one was a lot of red uh, i did this one one pretty much by myself and this one's in the front of the frame because I love the art so much I will redo this one eventually now I don't know where to go so I'll talk about area wear because I already mentioned them so let's pull these down area wear puzzles I highly highly recommend especially if you're a beginner these are all 500 pieces this is probably my favorite one of the area wear puzzles I also have one of the famous gradients they have different color uh, combinations colorways if you will um, highly recommend these are so much fun and actually great gradient puzzles like Karen puzzle says all the time are some of the best beginner puzzles you wouldn't think that but if you have good color vision and really good lighting these are so easy to put together because one half is yellow one half is orange and it's an obvious gradient when you get to the edges on either side it does get a little bit tricky because they're all the same color pretty much so their gradient puzzles are actually designed by Bryce Wilner and then these graphic ones are by Doosan Doosan. This one is pretty trippy, as you can see in the full puzzle image. Uh, very, you know, hard to look at sometimes. This is their lenticular puzzle in the 500 piece. I also have, I'm gonna have to get rid of this back here. I also have a lenticular Doosan Doosan puzzle from Area Wear in the 1000 piece. So they are different color uh color schemes you know this one's definitely much more challenging it is a little bit difficult but pretty much just like an intermediate puzzle i recommend all of the area wares their puzzle pieces are really good shapes and i'll talk a little bit more about my favorite puzzles as far as like textures and shapes because i'm very much all about the pieces themselves that is highly important to me and area wear has some pretty decent ones they're not my favorites not my favorite puzzles, but they're a pretty solid recommendation, especially for beginners. Um, I'll just go through these two New York Puzzle Company uh, Harry Potter ones that I have not done. I actually got both of these on Depop. These are not my favorite kinds of puzzles, like these images. The ones that have, you know, complex imagery, but they're all similar in tone. It's not my favorite. I like the colors and pictures to be more graphic and more distinct from one another this was just so hard to put together i could barely do the edges maybe it's just me not my favorite kind of puzzles to do so i have yet to do these two harry potter ones um, but definitely check depop and you know maybe poshmark i'm not sure but ebay for sure will have different puzzles as well okay let's talk about blue kazoo anyway i have two of their puzzles uh i absolutely love their boxes it's some of the most beautiful uh boxes that i own so definitely have these on display let's start with the moon shall we like i said i have some spacey ones this one was a gift from ryan this is probably the hardest puzzle i've ever done look at that i tried to keep it in 
chunks in the box because it was so hard and I'm I can't frame it because it's a circle nor would I really want to because it's just the moon and this was the first puzzle that I did on my new puzzle board and that made all the difference I don't think I could have done this puzzle if it weren't for my puzzle board if I had to do it on the dining table because let me tell you it was so hard on the other hand we have this gradient triangles one from blue kazoo this is probably the best recommendation if you're a beginner but you want to do a thousand pieces the area wear gradients are great they're only 500 pieces I think they have a thousand pieces too as well if you're interested um, but this one's easier because it has more references so you get an actual shape you get the distinct tones and color but it's still a full gradient from one side to the next. So only pinks are gonna be in this corner and you know that for sure versus you know it being spread out throughout the whole image. So this one's really easy. I loved doing this one. One of my favorites of all time. Highly, highly recommend this one. And their pieces are really good. I really like Blue Kazoo's pieces. <laughs> Let's move on to my horror puzzles. These are ones I have not put together yet so I can't speak on them. I'll probably do one of these next though because look at these images. Are you kidding me? These are from Toink never heard of them in my life um let's start with this one house of horrors beautiful image i love that it has modern horror pictures throughout like movie posters and everything like that it is just so gorgeous like this one would 100 percent be framed in my house at some point if i have an office um but i'm just gonna put it together and take it apart like usual um and then i also got king of horrors which is all of stephen king's books and again they also have newer books of his on here so these are like newer designs which I really enjoy but yeah this one just looks so much fun with the different book covers especially if you're familiar with his book covers or you know horror movie posters you could really put these together easily because you know where a piece is gonna go based on you know what it looks like okay we're gonna talk about some random puzzles now so and then we'll get to full-on companies this is from rifle paper co this puzzle is beautiful. I think this is one of the most expensive puzzles that I own, so obviously it's on display. This is the Strawberry Fields. This is a 500 piece puzzle and I love the images. I've done this one a couple times already because it's so easy to put together and so calming at the same time. This is probably one of the most like relaxing puzzle experiences. For one, the pieces are just texture wise so good. So good. I do want to get more of their puzzles, but for now, I just have the one and I treasure this one so much. One of my favorites to do. This one, so sentimental to me. This one is my easiest, I want to say easiest because of piece number, but I actually have one that's even easier than this, that's more pieces. This one is 300 pieces. So very easy, put it together in one session, no problem. I've done this puzzle probably at least five times at this point, and now what I do is I don't even look at the reference picture. I just put it together without looking to make it a little bit more challenging, even though I've put it together so many times I know exactly where everything goes. This one's very sentimental, probably one of my favorites in my collection. Um, the image is so great, obviously it's a little movie store, like a blockbuster type situation. I have three Gallisons. I did not know that. Why is the box different? Next we have probably, I don't want to say it's my number one, I really can't say. It's not my number one, you know? It's not my number one, but this was my number one for a long time. This is from Lemonade Pursuits, and this puzzle has my favorite texture and piece shapes. Maybe, well, not piece shapes. Piece shapes I have for another company, but texture, it's like this matte, velvety, soft texture for the puzzle pieces, and they just lock together so nice. This one, again, so calming. Absolutely love Lemonade Pursuits. They are completely owned by women, and all the artwork is done by women, which I absolutely love as well. This one is called Four Ferns and highly, highly recommend this one. You can tell it's not like a super cheaply made puzzle and it's so nice. I have four Gallisons. Next up, we have a puzzle that I have not done yet. It's only 500 pieces. This is Cosmic Dreams by Kate Sutton and it is done by Badge Bomb, but you can buy it on Puzzledly. Puzzledly has some of the best puzzles ever and best selections for the price point because you can get three puzzles and you get a discount when you order three or more this one's just so beautiful i had to i had to get this one i bought it so fast when i saw it on instagram because the colors are exactly up my alley it's cosmic you know it's a little astrology you know vibes which i love astrology <laughs> so this one's beautiful i love it so staying with puzzledly i want to talk about these 
three. These four I technically bought on Puzzledly, but we'll get to this one since these are right on top. This is one of the bundles that I did uh, last year and love it. I love these puzzle designs so much. These are all 500 pieces, so they are easy to put together super fast. Um, this one is Fresh Air Don't Care. I love their box designs too, how you have the full image on there. It's so pretty. And then I have Snow Darn Cold, which is actually such a surprise to me because I wanted a winter puzzle to do in December last year and I ended up on this one and it's my color scheme. Like I love oranges and yellows and to find a winter puzzle that is oranges and yellows was so unique. So I had to get that. And then out of the three, this one is my favorite puzzly puzzle hands down. This is Pretty Fly for a Cacti. But this image is so fun to put together. This is probably my number one recommendation from the Puzzledly brand themselves. Not on the whole website, um, but from the brand themselves. This one is just phenomenal to do. And then I also got this one, which is by The Found Company. But again, I purchased it on Puzzledly in a bundle. So this one is actually the easiest puzzle that I have. So this is obviously Mexican Bingo Lotteria, and I love this style of puzzle. You're gonna see a theme starting now of my favorite kind of puzzles to do, and I have multiples of this style where it's individual pictures that are separated with borders. Let me just say, I love these puzzles and they are my number one go-tos to redo. This one could easily be done in one sitting. It's so, so easy. This is the easiest puzzle I have. It's 500 pieces. So if you're like real beginner, check out this one. This one is so much fun to put together. I guarantee if you get this one and put it together, you're gonna be obsessed with puzzling because this is so much fun. Oh, I also have this one from Puzzle Leaf from the brand itself. I have not put it together yet. It is a circle, but it looks so much fun, right? It's everything wavy. Um, again, I love the distinct shapes and colors. Okay, let's talk about Better Co. So I've only done one of their puzzles before. I have two currently. This one is, remember the 90s? puzzle look at that picture this is designed by alex krugly and i love everything in this picture this is the one that i've done one of the hardest puzzles i've done how is that possible i looked at this did not think it would be that hard this took me so long to do and that's really kind of deterred me from doing the enchanted view puzzle because this one looks even harder because there's so much blank space and kind of like the marauders puzzle it has a lot of same you know single color on the outside border so this one looks really hard so i have yet to do this one as well let's talk about gallison so i guess i have four i did not know i thought i had two i thought these were my only two gallisons these are also gallisons over here i didn't know that um so plant shelfie Sounds empty. This is the one that's currently on my puzzle board, as you already saw. It's the one I most recently put together. Loved this puzzle. It was my first time doing it through. But this one was so fun to do, and this is like the perfect amount of challenge and fun. Like, I never felt like I was really stuck on this puzzle, but it was enough of a challenge that it was really fun. So, recommend that. And then we have Zero Gravity, which is from Art of Play, I believe, is the website Ryan got this from. This one is a doozy, let me tell you. This one's so much fun. They have shapes in the shape of planets and stars and everything, and they're so much fun. Even this little guy, the little astronaut, is a whole piece in itself. Like, the whole thing is one piece, and it's so much fun. And the other two Gallisons are two of my favorite puzzles of all time. First up, we have Classic Rewind. This one you've seen probably a couple times on my Instagram stories. I've done this one a couple times. It's so much fun. I love the shiny aspect, how some of these because they are actually printed like that where they have the metallic shine on there which just adds to it but one of my favorite ones to redo it's so much fun it's definitely easy because of you know you obviously get a lot of words anything with words makes it so much easier and then we have zodiac power this one is I have to say top three in my whole collection. This one is so much fun. I think this is gonna be the one I redo next. Um, I'll probably do one of the horror ones next, but this one will be after that. Um, this one is just so amazing, especially if you love astrology. But all the color combinations make this puzzle so easy to put together, but so much fun, especially because it's a thousand pieces. It's just the perfect, the perfect puzzle. This is a perfect puzzle. If you're gonna buy any from this video, this is the one that I highly recommend the most for beginners, intermediates, anybody, because it is so much fun. Have I convinced you to buy puzzles yet? I'm sorry if uh, you're gonna spend a lot of money after this video. Okay, so we have two more companies left and one random. Let's talk about the random one, shall we? 
This is a Ravensburger puzzle. It's my only Ravensburger, and I actually got this in a horror PR box, which is so incredible that I got a puzzle. It was for the movie The Night, Ho the Night House. <laughs> this is an escape puzzle. Uh, so not 100% sure how it works yet because Ryan and I are currently doing this on the dining table. Only because I have to do puzzles every day and he does not do puzzles every day. So on the weekends we work on this one. During the week I do one on my puzzle board. That's why this one is on the dining table. Anyway, this is the only Ravensburger that I have but I know it's a very popular puzzle brand. This is the brand that you can find in like Target the most I think. Oh, I have three companies left. Anyway, this is a weird one though. I will say we've sorted the pieces and done the edge and it is bizarre. It has a lot of rectangles for no reason and I'm not sure how those work in yet, but I'll keep you updated on my horror uh, Instagram page. Okay, so the last three companies we're gonna talk about in the last three brands of my collection. Let's talk about these that are behind me right now. So this is from the Magic Puzzle Company. These were actually founded or like started on Kickstarter, I believe. And this is my number one recommendation for people getting into puzzles. For one, you can find them easily at Target. They have, I think, two different collections. They have two different collections. The first one included um, these top three. I believe, and they run about $25 a piece, which is such a good deal for the kind of puzzle experience you're about to get from these. There's a reason why I do not post these on my Instagram stories because I don't wanna spoil anything for you about how these puzzles work. If you're gonna get any of them, get the Mystic Maze. These are so much fun. Let me show you a little bit inside. So first of all, you get two little pictures so you can do this with someone because that's what they're meant for. Look at these images, so good. Don't wanna show you too much. The pieces come in these bags, which I obviously did not keep in there. Let me just say there's a second envelope that you cannot open until you finish the other part of the puzzle, the main part of the puzzle. But that's all I wanna say because these are so much fun. I did not know anything going into them except there was except there was something magical about them and there is and these are so fun this one is my favorite the mystic maze the coloring is so beautiful that being said the first time you do one of these puzzles is going to be the best time so embrace it because the next time you do the other one it's not going to be the same i have not done happy isles yet this is the one i haven't done yet in my collection i also need to buy the other two from their second collection um, but i have done these two and they're great this one not really recommend Look at that, not very fun looking. I mean, the colors are beautiful, but there's one color. So this one is so hard. <laughs> this one's actually the easiest one that I've done in the uh, Magic Puzzle collection because it's actually a gradient. I don't know if you can tell, but yellow, orange, it goes all the way down to dark purple. And that makes it so much easier to put this together. So this was the easiest one out of all of them to do. And let me just say the piece shapes you're gonna find in there. That's all I'm gonna say. So next we're gonna talk about my Keyway Designs puzzles. I own all three of the collection from Keyway. These are my most expensive puzzles and I'll show you why. They are completely clear. They're clear acrylic puzzles. That means you could go both sides and you don't know where they go. Uh, these are some of my most challenging, but some of my favorite ones to redo. So I have all three. I have the 100A, I have the 127A, and I have the 225A. This one's 225 pieces, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when they're all clear acrylic, let me tell you. I highly recommend Keyway. I bought these on Etsy, so I will link their Etsy down below. Um, they also have an Instagram. They do like other stuff in their company as well. They're founded in Toronto. Um, but yeah, highly recommend the Keyway if you want like a real good challenge. So the last company we're gonna discuss New York Puzzle Company. These are some of my favorite puzzles. I know I say that with every single puzzle that I have here, like, oh, it's one of my favorites. They're all my favorites. They're all my children. Um, I love them all. Not equally. Um, obviously, I have preferences, and I'll get to those in a bit. But uh, yeah, let's talk about New York Puzzle Company, shall we? My only other Harry Potter one that I have are the book covers, and this is the best Harry Potter one that New York Puzzle Company does. Again, you see a pattern. We got the different pictures. This one was so easy. It's 500 people. Pieces. I was worried it was gonna be like the other Harry Potter ones that would be difficult to put together. So easy because I know the book covers so well, obviously. Definitely cannot wait to redo that one. Um, the next one is a new one I have not done. It's a 500 piece one, part of their um, Explorers Wanted uh, collection, which this one is for Mars. And it looks very challenging, but the fact that it's 500 pieces, I think it'll be a little bit easier. Two other new ones have not done. 
This is why I'm not buying puzzles anymore. Like I can't because I have so many that I haven't done yet. So Ryan's favorite beer is a Guinness and I saw they had a whole Guinness collection. So we picked out these two together to do together, but I love the pictures on these. They're 500 pieces and they have a whole Guinness collection, which is just so interesting. They have really good collections on New York Puzzle Company. I'm not gonna talk about that one yet. We'll get to that. Um, this is one that I did right before the plant shelfie. So this is one of my newer ones, the housewares collection, 500 pieces. This is my first and only puzzle that I have that's an actual photograph versus a graphic design picture or picture created on the computer. You know, this is like an actual photo of actual objects, um, which are not my favorite type of puzzles. Like I'm not very drawn to them at all. They did have this camera one that I thought would be really fun though. It's like vintage cameras. I love vintage technology, anything. They also have like a camping one, which would be fun because I love camping. Um, but they're just like pictures of, you know, images that are put together. Okay, so these last two puzzles are actually also in my top three with that Zodiac puzzle. These two are some of my favorite ones to redo. Um, I'm obsessed with these puzzles. First up, we have a 500 piece in this NPR. Now, I don't really care that much about NPR. Not gonna lie, <laughs> don't listen to NPR. Do not care that much, but this picture is everything to me. This picture is so nostalgic to me because I did this um, in the fall or winter uh, last year and it was just a really good winter. I loved last winter But again, this has like the separate images. I actually just recently redid this one again It is so fun and I do have to say New York Puzzle Company has my favorite piece shapes of all time of all time favorite piece shapes hands down These are so much fun to put together. They're so thick and these shapes themselves are so unique and it's hard to explain because it's like a tactile thing, but these piece shapes are just so much fun and some of my favorite ones to work with. Texture wise, Lemonade Pursuits, nothing comes close to that. That one is incredible. I also love their piece shapes too because they're like in weird triangles, um, but New York Puzzle Company, I have to give it to them. They have the my favorite pieces ever. So the last puzzle I'm gonna talk about is my last horror puzzle as well. And this puzzle, means so much to me as well. Again, I did this last winter, nostalgic. I just remember watching Last Night in Soho again and doing this one. And it's just such good memories last winter. I don't know. I like associate puzzles with times of my life now. Is that weird? <laughs> I think I have to say with confidence, this is my number one favorite puzzle in my collection because it has every single thing that I love about puzzling in one puzzle. It has the individual pictures with a border. It has space themes. It has horror themes. It's New York Puzzle Company, which is my favorite pieces, and it's 1,000 pieces, which means it'll take me a little bit of time to do so I can slowly chip away at it, which is one of my favorite things about 1,000 piece puzzles. So yeah, this is my favorite one. I'm glad we're ending on this one because this is the good one to end on. This one is perfect. So if you're going to walk away from this video and purchase any puzzle, my number one recommendation is still going to be the Magic Puzzle Company puzzle. Specifically, the Mystic Maze is the best one in my opinion, unless you're a beginner. Then the Crystal Caves is really good as well. Also, this one for beginners, they're both thousand pieces, but I promise you they're not that difficult. The Zodiac Power also from Gallison. This is one of the easiest ones that I have that is also the most fun. It's definitely not my easiest one. My easiest one hands down is this one though. So if you're looking for a really easy one that's only 500 pieces, definitely check out the Lotteria or the Mexican Bingo one from Puzzledly, also from The Found. So those are my top three recommendations, I would say. Although the NPR and the um, Galaxy of Horrors are my favorites generally for myself personally, just when I what I look for in a puzzle. So the last thing that I wanna do in this video is give you guys a good old ASMR puzzle crunch. I do them all the time on my Instagram stories, but how could I deprive you of that in a video when I have a really good microphone? So we're gonna do a puzzle crunch. And if you want more puzzle crunches, just follow me on my horror Instagram down here and link down below. So I hope you enjoyed this puzzle experience and seeing my entire collection storage and setup and favorites and every single thing you would need to know about my puzzle collection, considering it's one of my special interests and just one of my favorite, favorite hobbies that I've discovered that has really saved me as a person, like saved my mental health. It has just been incredible. So without further ado, let's get into the puzzle crunch.